You know what? I don't even blame. I don't even blame the, the, this dude that had the gun. I don't blame him. I don't blame the other parents that participated in that fight and that scuffle and getting mad. I don't blame them either. You know who I blame? How about we blame the police? Uh-huh. How about that? I don't think this was none of their fault at all. I think if they were going to file a lawsuit, I think that they need to file a lawsuit against the police because the police should have been there patrolling and the police should have been there uh, protecting them from themselves. And the police should have been been searching and seizing people before they even came in. What, what did they call that? Stop and frisk. They should have been stopping and frisking these black people as they were going in to make sure that they didn't have no weapons. Right? Oh, that's right. You can't do that because that's the thing that black folks complain about is the thing that actually keeps the general public more safe. Right? So maybe we can't blame the police this time. Can we blame supremacy? Can we can we blame this on folks this time, y'all? Huh? I didn't see a single white face out there. Not one. I didn't see a single one out there. And if it was, I'm pretty sure that our people will be pointing the finger at them in some shape, form, or fashion because what we don't want to do is we don't want to take accountability for our actions. Tell me when I've said something that is factually inaccurate. We're always looking to push blame. I actually was watching the uh, the last of the uh, Ahmad Aubrey trial where they sentenced them in to life and you watch that, 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 uh, that, uh, that judge tell those men that he about to send them to jail and what they did was despicable. It was murder. It was this, it was that right. But I gotta, I gotta give credit to my father, which I which is why I believe that fathers are important because if that were me and I were Ahmad Aubrey, you know what my father would have said to me? Why were you in that position in the first place? I'm always thinking preemptively to make sure that I don't put myself in bad spots. I'm not jumping in fights. I'm not getting in scuffles. I'm not arguing with. Hello. I'm not throwing gang signs at people. I'm not throwing wild ass insults at folks. And I'm damn sure not going to have my daughter around a dangerous environment. This, let me tell y'all this. The second that the first her hollering and cussing and screaming broke out, I would have been like, hey, uh-uh, come on. We going, we're leaving, time to go. I would have grabbed my kid, we gone. Let me tell y'all something funny between when when you're talking about how black lives matter and you talk about this coach's life mattered, Coach, coach Hickman, y'all talking about his life mattered, right? Which I don't think it did. I don't think his life mattered. And I'll tell you why here in just a second. Want to make sure y'all hear me very clearly. I'm going to tell you why I don't believe his life mattered. But you would think that if we love each other so much and we support each other so much and, and our lives really should matter the way that they do, then you would think that we should be the safest around our own kind. But the statistics, which is, I don't know why we're allergic to statistics, like we break out whenever somebody talks about statistics. Statistically, we are unsafe around people who look just like us us but we're always pointing the finger talking about well this is the problem and that's the problem and police are the problem and the government's the problem our neighbors are the problem these rogue white men and trucks and guns and let's go get them boys that's the problem like that's happening every day this type of thing is happening every day this happens at the club this happens in the hood this happens at games you know how many fights I've seen break out at children's basketball games? You know where fights aren't breaking out at? At tennis matches. I took my daughter to a tennis match in Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I can tell you because it's already gone. Two days. 
Guess how many arguments and fights they got into? But should not be afraid of white supremacy since it was mainly white folks around, mainly people that didn't look like me. Shouldn't we have fear for our lives, right, y'all? Huh? Me and my daughter and my family, we should have feared for our lives out there. Because we were out there among people that don't share our skin color. But it's funny how nothing violent happened. There were no cuss words that occurred. There were no tennis rackets thrown. There were no fights that broke out. Nobody got ran over with cars. Nobody pulled out a gun. We all shared pizza together in the same restaurant. No argument broke out no matter who went, who won or lost. Fights breaking out at PTA meetings. Thank you for posting that. I forgot about that. Fights are breaking out at PTA meetings. Who would have thought? Let me tell you why Coach Hickman's life did not matter. It should have mattered to us, but it didn't. This coach, this father, this black man, handsome looking black man too, isn't he? Good looking black man. His life meant nothing to people who look just like him. And that's a mic drop moment. Let me say that again. The reason why his life didn't matter is because his life should have mattered to the people who look just like him. He's a father. He's a coach. He's a black man. And we treated him worse than anybody on this planet, any racist on this planet, any bigot on, in this planet, any person that's prejudiced on this planet would have treated him. I think that man probably would have stood a better chance of growing up in slavery rather than around these people at practice. I think that Coach Hickman probably would have stood a better chance of surviving Jim Crow than surviving practice. And for us to be in 2022, the year, the years of technology, the years of progression, the years of the woke mentality of our people. And this is still happening. And yes, I got a lot to say. I, I really need to end this, but it's just so much on my heart right now because it just really bothered me to the core. And I said to myself, I said, damn, we really, we really are lost. We really don't give a shit about each other. I say people were hurt, but I don't see this changing. I don't see this changing. We are willing to turn on each other for the dumbest things. And if nothing else, even if we look at each other as the enemy, if that man looked at that other black man as the enemy, you would think that when you mix our babies, our children in the same environment, that if nothing else, maybe that would change our mentality. Maybe you have a mentality one way when you go to the, the club at night, when you go to the strip club at night, or you going to go turn up and have drinks at night, and maybe you see everybody as the enemy like that. But you would think that maybe when the, when the lights are on, when you're outside in the middle of the daytime, when you get that fresh sun and fresh atmosphere in your lungs, you would think that maybe your mentality might change a little bit when your babies are around because they need us. They look up to us and they depend on us for everything that they get. Now, what are these boys are supposed to think? How are these boys supposed to value their lives when they see how their own fathers are treating each other? Fathers got to step up. Men got to step up. I saw some women out there jumping in that fight too. They got to do better. But I would really love to see more of a cry to our own people to say that this nonsense has to stop and not enough of us are spreading that message. Thank y'all for letting me share what's on my heart. R.I.P. to Coach Hickman. 
I believe his life mattered. I just wish his life mattered to, to the people who were out there and thought that that fight was more important, that thought that that practice was more important, that thought that their personal pride was more important than that black man, that black father, that black coach's life. Please spread this message, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. Maybe you didn't understand nothing I said, but let me know in the comments section. Thank you.